Hey guys, uh, new episode up. Uh, that was just me practicing for my next progress video, which um, after that first year, um, I don't really know how to set out these progress videos. So I, I think I'm just putting in like, you know, progress month number 13, you know, one year and one month, and then just labeling the song that I'm learning it. So at the moment it's Lazy John. I, I really have this drive to want to be able to play and sing my fiddle. I'm not the best singer, but I just wanted to have a go. <clears throat> so, okay. So like the title says, let's talk about uh, hurdles. So the five hurdles that you are going to probably have to deal with in your first 12 months of being an adult beginner violinist or an adult beginner fiddler. So, number one, your decline in motivation. And I think this is definitely uh, something that will happen in the first four months. In your first four months, you'll know if you're going to stick to the violin and it'll all come to motivation if you're willing to grind. Because it is. you Once you hit month number three, uh, your that hockey stick learning curve tends to start to level out a bit. You're still learning a lot, but you're not learning as fast, and 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 you don't have those amazing, amazing like wow moments after that third, three or four months. You you spend two or three months after that really just grinding, and then it's normally around that month number seven, eight. Weird things start to happen, and 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 shit gets really good. But it definitely, um, you can expect to have some real decline in motivation. Uh, and, you know, people get to 12 months and just put the violin in the cupboard and never touch it again. Because, you know, deep down, they've only really wanted to see what it was like. So how do you, how do you deal with, uh, you know, how, how, what, what's, the, what's the remedy for this decline in motivation? And a lot of it comes down to, really defining why you want to play the violin. So if, if you've done something really fluffy, like, ah, oh, because I want to, like, it's not going to be enough to get you through the really shit part of learning the violin. So <clears throat> let me, rather than do this life coach bullshit, let me tell you what I did. So what I want to be, and it, it does say this on my uh, on my actual uh, New Fiddler YouTube uh, before you subscribe there's like a little video that comes up and I, t and I clearly outline what I want to do and I even put it in years so I go 2019 I want to do this 2020 I want to do this 2022 I want to be doing this uh, and that is the best way to be able to really um, n really nail down uh, timeline uh, so and it really motivates you to get there. So what I want to do, what I want to be is a performing fiddler. I want to be able to stand in front of a crowd of people, you know, and I'm not like pressuring myself. I'm talking like a free open air concert that has like 20 people watching, almost busk. You know what? Like, actually, let me just reset that. My first, so that's what I want to do. I want, my end goal is to be able to play in front of like, 20 people seated, uh, me on stage, a PA system, and me playing and singing into a mic. That's my goal to, as a fiddler. My first goal is to be able to play uh, half an hour of songs. That doesn't matter if I'm playing five songs and I'm dragging them out for half an hour, but I want to be able to play for half an hour busking at my local train station. And that's what I'm working towards. So everything that I'm doing is just me playing in my violin in a tunnel, uh, coming out of a train station. That's it. So, uh, so that is my goal. So when things get shit, uh, I put on YouTube and I watch someone playing uh, and singing on, on the fiddle. Or I watch people like Bruce Molsky play. So if you want to be like a violinist who is playing in your local orchestra... Like, go go watch Marika plays, and in in her first like year and year and a half, you can see that she's doing recitals. She's playing in front of people, and 
like she's so new as well that it you know she's not performance level but it doesn't matter because it's a violin recital secondly she starts to play in her local orchestra too so this is what's motivating her is as a classical violinist beginner adult classical violinist her like defined goal her her first second third goal is to go and play in front of people or in a community with other violinists and she did that i mean in the making of this blog like a couple of months ago she went to ibiza to be in uh bollywood um uh in music video that's a great sort of step through goal like it's amazing like she said she wanted to perform she's she's you know it's immortalized now in a Indian Bollywood movie, uh, video, music video. Brilliant. Okay, number two, uh, it definitely has to do with the ego, and that's uh, realization. The realization of your skill level. So many people just, um, they they think they're going to hit, like, an, a reasonable level within their first year. Like, they think it's like guitar, and, you know, you can jump up and and perform within your first year and the truth is is that you can't like violin is a uh, uh it's a long-term goal like your first year is is, is like you're just going to be in your room annoying everyone around you and your second year is going to be about really taking a couple of songs and getting them perfect like m most classical violinists are constantly trying to perfect uh, different pieces that they're learning, just classical pieces that they're learning. It's this constant drive to be better at what you're learning. And, and a lot of the times, like, they'll learn, like, 10 pieces to a reasonable level, and then there'll be three place pieces that they can, that they get to a really, really good level, and then there's one piece that they'll master. That, and when I say master, like, as an adult, class, adult beginner classical violinist, you will never reach the level of technique that people who start when they're young but that doesn't matter but when i say master it, it'll be the best thing that you will be able to play when people go play something for me you will play that one piece because you have practiced it over and over again for years <clears throat> so the only way to really fight this you'll feel put out that it'll be a shock when you realize that your level of skill is not what you expected it will demotivate you a little and so this is definitely a hurdle so what you really need to do is reevaluate your time frame so if you if you've been i want to say i don't want to say immature about it like if you haven't really thought through or you haven't really researched how difficult this instrument is and you think that within a year and a half you're going to be able to uh play things for your friends or you're going to be able to perform like you need to reevaluate that like see where you are now and give yourself another year and then you know you've already if you've already dealt with or if this is the moment where your hurdle number one and number two come together where you realize that you don't really or you believe that you don't have the skill to continue playing the violin and this then creates that decline in motivation hurdle number one um yeah you need to be basically reevaluate your goals uh and the time frame so basically you can almost say that like the answer for hurdle number one, decline in motivation, and hurdle number two, which is the realization of your skill level, it really is just real. It's just about stopping and giving yourself a break and starting again, and and, and giving yourself better, a, a more realistic time frame, <coughs> and giving yourself a break. Okay, and number three is time. So. This one is probably the biggest hurdle of them all. This is basically the downward spiral into quitting violin or fiddle. And that is the time allocation. So when you first start out, it's all about it's all about your your shiny new violin. If it's expensive or cheap, it doesn't matter. You have this brand new toy and you're playing it every day for an hour 
And then when you put it down, you just want to pick it up, but you can't because you know you're just annoying the shit out of everybody in the house or in the neighborhood um, because you sound like shit, but you're so excited about the next day because you'll pick it up. And then month number three, you're, you know, you're down to like four practices a week. By the time you hit month number eight, you're getting like two practices in a week. And then you hit like your first year and you're down to one practice a week if you're lucky. Sometimes you maybe you'll go a whole two weeks and you won't pick up your violin. And it's at pretty much at that point that people stop. And this is why I believe it's the biggest hurdle. Even though it's halfway through my my list, it's pretty much the biggest hurdle is the amount of time you allocate for your practice. As soon as you start, as soon as everything else starts taking priority over your violin, you'll quit. And gaming is, and, and guys, like, boys, if you're fucking, if you're whipping out your mobile games instead of picking up your violin for 10 minutes, shame, shame. Remember, guys, don't be a zombie. All right, number four. Number four is uh is apathy uh, and and basically it's the emotion so everything else has been things like one declining motivation two the realization that you don't have the skill so you know three how much time you spend and number four is the emotion that you feel from basically watching your wish to play the violin slowly fade and that's apathy it's like, oh, I was not good enough. Or, uh, you know, I don't have time. I work full time now. I don't have time. Like, it, nah, like I've outgrown it. Like, it's apathy, man. And you have to pretty much kick that shit in the butt and realize that you feel like this because you have to grind to be good at violin. And you have to spend two years grinding to even be able to be at a level where you can show people that you can play the violin so until then it's almost like for the first two years of violin you don't play the violin nobody cares that you play the violin and then there will be a point where that all changes but dealing with the apathy and holding on to positive like feelings when you're learning in that two years is is difficult but it's still a hurdle so apathy is a huge hurdle I can't, i'm not good enough I, this is shit or you know i i've got a girlfriend now so i can't really or like i've got a kid i've got a girlfriend how you know however old you are and you have to get past that and of course number five is just loss of interest you don't give a fuck anymore so your it, the image that you have in your mind when you started was to be like some awesome you know YouTuber who can play violin like Taylor Davis or maybe you wanted to be the next uh Lindsay Sterling which is pretty much what every other female out of beginner violin seems to be doing making f fantasy themed violin videos i don't know i don't get it do your own thing um but yeah it's the loss of interest once you realize that you can't become lindsey sterling in a year and a half or even two years the loss of interest is boom and then you're gone and it's 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 a shame but i'll tell you like i understand that shit i understand that uh we kind of live at a time at the moment where like you know Games make it easy to learn something. You can learn to play a game in five minutes. And if you can't learn in five minutes, most people are gone. Most people are out of there. Like they're onto the next, they're back onto the Apple store and finding another game. Because people don't have the patience to actually get good at a game. They just, everything's about casual gaming, casual hobbies, casual everything. And violin, any kind of musical instrument, except for maybe fucking the tin whistle, is, uh, is not a casual hobby. So uh, maybe singing if you're if you've sung all your life, but then it wouldn't be really casual. It's when the realization that you're good, you can make it a hobby that maybe it could be called a casual hobby. But yeah, that's just the world we live in today. And so I completely understand if like 
you push past pretty much, you know, the motivation thing and you're, you know, you've realized that you're shit, but you, you know, you push through that and then you give yourself time and then one day you just, it just pops and you're like, this is fucked. I'm going to go play PUBG or I'm going to go watch reality TV. I kind of understand because that's just the world we live in now. All right, guys, let's nutshell this. So number one was your decline in motivation. Number two is realization, just realizing that you don't have the skill. Number three is time. You don't have the time or you think you don't have the time or you won't make time. Number four was the apathy, which is basically, I guess you could say, is the emotion of all this decline in 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 violin practice and skill well not skill but yeah and number five is uh just loss of interest so there you go and the way to deal with them is the decline in motivation is make sure you have a clear goal make sure that the first goal that you're going to reach is really really obvious my first goal is i want to be able to play amazing grace in front of my mum. Number two is the realization that your level of skill is not as good as it was. How to fix that? Wake the fuck up, basically. Like, if you thought this was going to be easy, like, holy shit. Like, just go watch some progress videos before you even start violin. But if you're already starting, like, just suck it up. You can do it. Uh, number three is time. Like, you're going to have... There's going to be periods throughout your first 12 months where you're going to get one practice in a week and then there's going to be times after that where you'll be able to practice every day for an hour. And then there'll be times where you practice five days a week for 10 minutes. It doesn't matter. As long as you touch your violin more than three times a week, you're okay. Once it starts to go a little lower, you need to make sure that that time period is not prolonged. The more time that you only spend one day a week practicing, the less you're going to progress. Number four is apathy. I think everyone at some point is gonna feel like they are terrible. It's even worse when, if you are constantly monitoring your progress against somebody else, like say even a YouTuber, and then you're like, yep, I'm up with them. And then they release a video and it, their, their improvement is just so good that it fucks you up. Basically, don't allow that to make you stop violin. Like, deal with it. Like, find a way. Like, use it as a challenge. Like, if that person can get better, so can you. It just might be that they've had a run where they're spending every day practicing, 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 and it's really focused. Because I know sometimes you have this period where you can focus practice a lot, and then you have these weeks where all you're doing is just playing songs because you just want to jam and there's nothing wrong with just wanting to jam and number five loss of interest again there's almost no way to deal with loss of interest it doesn't matter how much i fucking think i know it i know things the truth is is no once you lose interest in violin you, you just have to put it down in a cupboard and Maybe you'll come back to it in a year. Maybe uh, things are just too busy at the moment. Anyway, that's a nutshell. I've talked way too long. All right, guys. So next episode will be up pretty soon. Hit the subscribe button. I never say that, guys. I never say it. I'm the worst fucking YouTuber. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the subscribe button? I don't know where it is. It's somewhere around here. All right, guys. Enjoy. Bye.